Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Hope you are all well and thank you as always for tuning in. So when I left you last week, we were doing the bedroom and I was, if you remember, I had a bookcase along that wall where I had all my toiletries, makeup and shoes and I also had a funky cupboard next to it with my big TV on the top. Well, as, as, at the end of that video, I was going to clear, clear the bookcase and put it onto Facebook Marketplace, which I did. But while I was on Facebook Marketplace, I thought, oh, well, I might as well just list the TV and list that cupboard, even though I hadn't emptied that cupboard. And, well, all three of them sold straight away. Now, thankfully, the bookcase was empty and... The person who brought it sent um, her son round to help me carry because it, it was flipping heavy to get down those stairs. But the other cupboard, um, I had to empty quite quickly. And I didn't really have time, so I just got a bin bag and a bucket and I didn't have time to put the camera on to show you. It was frantic. I just had like a bucket and there, I've got the bucket here. <laughs> here. <laughs> And a bin bag, and I threw most of it into a bin bag, and then thought, well, I didn't have time to sort because that's a lot of my makeup and like spare toothbrushes and stuff like that. I just didn't have time then to sort it, so I just put it in that bucket for now. Um, and then I pulled the drawers out so I could carry the cabinet downstairs and then carry the drawers down and put it in. Anyway, they came to collect it, and then while they were here, they asked me if my other funky one that was in the front room was still for sale, which it was. And <laughs> so they brought that as well. And I hadn't emptied that at all. So I just had to basically empty it onto the sofa so they could take it straight away. They also brought my coffee table and loads of other little tables that were in my garage. So it was a very productive day. But I have to say I've learned a very fast way to declutter now is sell your furniture and then in a mad rush you just have to empty your drawers quickly marvelous anyway got something else to show you as well so we were talking about underwear and uh, bras and what I'm going to do when um, I'm traveling because I can't take those great big bras with me that have all that underwire and that padding so I met up with my friend um, and we went uh, shopping and actually she, she's she's quite good at this and like she says you know um, I've changed rooms now and um, like she said you know you, you can use swimwear and you can use it as bras which I mean I know that but no I've never really done it anyway we went shopping and uh, we got some boring bras just for everyday use um, that have a little bit of padding, but hardly any, but no underwire. And look how small they go. I mean, look. So I've got a few of those, which we're going to use for traveling. And then what we did is we got some bikini tops. Because, especially when I'm going to warm places, like when I'm in Antigua and stuff like that, we got nice ones that have got no underwire. Obviously, you don't really get underwire in bikinis. Well, maybe you do, I've never seen it. But it's got a bit of padding and a nice shape. But then they can double up as bikini tops and bras. So uh, that was quite a good solution. So my whole pile is very small now. I have to say as well, quite good going with a friend because I was like trying them on in the shop over my clothes. Um, so like this, like I was doing it over what I was wearing. And like I was trying to get into a, I'm not going to tell you the exact sizes. I hope you can't see the label. Oh yeah, you can. Anyway, I was trying to get into a particular size and I got it, you know, I got it on like this and she's like, that's too tight for you. You need a bigger size. You know, good friends tell you what you don't want to hear as well, don't they? Oh, and also when that gentleman, well, that couple actually came to collect um, the cupboard who also ended up buying lots of my other furniture when uh, and I, I never really thought about this actually there was me thinking oh it's just not selling on uh, Facebook marketplace but what he said was he picked up the one that he'd seen that I listed at the weekend and um, when he said oh is, you've got a similar one for sale has it gone and I said oh no no 
He said, oh, it was just, it was on there uh, over a week ago, so I assumed it had gone. Well, and that was very interesting to me then. So when I'm thinking, oh, nobody's interested, they're actually thinking that I've sold them. It's made me really think about uh, Facebook Marketplace a bit here then, and maybe I need to delete all my things every now and again and restart. Anyway, let's get on with something new today. So I'm in my kitchen. Yes, I know it looks like a mess, but I have an enormous amount of plates in that cupboard and bowls. Now there's a reason I have so many. So basically, when my son was living with me, <clears throat> he was a serious, messy person. And I used to make him dinner. And uh, he'd always leave his plates and bowls up there. Now, I think this is a common thing with teenagers and uh, young men. They, and then it gets to the point where, well, so I was always buying plates because I'd never seemed to have any. But then I get to a point where I'd have none left again. And I'd say, Daniel, do you want your favorite dinner today? Meatballs? He'd go, oh yes, please. And I'd say, then go and bring all my bowls and plates back down so they have something to serve it on and then you're gonna have meatballs. So that's how I used to get my plates back. But that's how I ended up with so many because I used to think, oh, I've not got enough plates again. And I always did. Now, my neighbor, um, she does a lot of church work and charity work. And she asked me the other day, if you've got any, you know, plates and things, you know, and you know, you don't want them, can they have them for the refugees that have been set up in homes and they don't have anything? So I'm going to clear these out because I only really need to leave myself a couple of um, plates. And I don't, oh, I don't really use plates. I've always used pasta bowls to eat. Because then, like, especially if you have gravy, it doesn't splosh all over the place and make a mess. So I actually never eat off a plate. So I'm going to actually pack these up. Just keep a couple of those bowls um, for now. And then I'm going to take them down to her so she can have them and, and, and give them to good use. So that's what I'm going to be doing this afternoon. Um, gosh, look, I've got down here. This is where I collect all the, the pin bags that I fill up. Um, oh, and I've got parcels there of things I've sold. I've got to go and post those off. You know, I collect the bin bags and then uh, in a couple of days, um, you, you know, Friday, our main rubbish bin comes. And my neighbours have no rubbish in theirs, and I have no rubbish in mine. So they allow me to fill all our bins up. So uh, I get rid of a lot of it that way. And then every week, the same at the gym, they have hardly any rubbish in their bin. And I mean, we're paying for it to be collected. So I get about three bags in there a week as well. So that is how I've been getting rid of my rubbish. I've been stealing bin space off people. Oh well. <laughs> Gets the job done. Now... The front room is looking a little bit better this week as well because I've still got the cupboards and everything. But because they took one of the cupboards and they took the coffee table, I was able to like move things around and I just shove all the blooming boxes in the corner. Um, so they're out the way. So I can at least get round my table now which is also where I work and do everything, and it was becoming like an obstacle course to get there. Mm. There's always so much to get on with. Right. Right, so now I'm going to do something fun. Well, I find it fun. Anyway, it's actually my favorite thing, and it's planning travel. So this is my itinerary <laughs> for my Australia road trip um, that I'm going on in August, which will actually be the first time that I leave the UK. And uh, so I've, I, I've been putting the spreadsheets together for this trip for about four years, you know, and every time I see something that I'd like to do, I add it to the Excel sheet so I can build up a really good road pad. And uh, I've what I've been doing when I've had time is going through it because everything is set now and I know what we're doing I know where we're going and what we wanted to see and a lot of it's been booked 
but I've been going through making sure I've got all the bookings printed off of that. I've got information sheets that we're going to need printed off. Um, things like where's the laundry going to be, where's the supermarkets on the on the road, and all of those things, and putting them all in one folder. Normally, when I go on holiday, the folder is about this big. This is actually a lever arch. It's huge. Um, and I've got everything sorted now, all the way from Perth to Darwin, and Darwin to Adelaide, and then I'm just finishing off the Adelaide back to Perth, and I've got up to Wave Rock. Um, so I've got, I think, three more campsites to book. <coughs> yes, uh, one in Albany, one in Walpole, and one in Boston. I've already booked the final Perth one. Um, so these are all public um, campsites that are left. Um, in Western Australia, if you want to stay in the national parks and camp there, you have to book 180 days. You know, you can book up to 180 days before the date. Now, some of these campsites are super popular and you have to book really quick to get the one that you want, to, it's like, to even get in them. And there was one that I desperately wanted to be on a specific site number and it only has, I think, 21 or something like that altogether. And I was in Antigua at the 180 day mark and I got all my times muddled up. Anyway, I missed the exact time and I didn't get the spot I wanted. I ended up four, four, site, four spots along. I mean, I know that's not bad. But uh, it made sure then I would just check in all the time. Um, I do love planning travel. I'm, uh, you know, I, I've, I've always done it. I love to plan trips. Even when I go on escorted tours, I, I like get there. There, um, I've probably got one somewhere. Um, yeah, so like I would plan, like put in the description all the things that they're doing on their itinerary. And then next to it, I'll put notes of things that I want to go and see in addition. So like <clears throat> when we were in Santiago, all the extra things that I wanted to do. Um, I do it all the time. When I go traveling full time, I mean, I have a fair idea of the things I want to go and see at different places, but I'm not like going to make like, these Excel sheets. <laughs> and so because I'll obviously be staying there for so much longer, um, it won't be like I'm trying to jam everything into two days or two weeks. I'm going to have like one to three months in these places. So I've got to have plenty of time to explore at my own pace and really get to see what I want to see. This is why I love going to Antigua because I don't obviously have Excel sheets for that. I know what I want to go and see. I know what I want to do and I just do it at my own time in my own place, you know, my own my own way and uh, you know, I, I really enjoy doing that. Anyway, that, this puts me in my happy place for a bit. So I'm going to get on with this. Um, thank you for watching and um, I'll give you another update soon. Hopefully we'll have some updates on the way the house sale is going and uh, should be able to get some news on the van because the MOT got moved till tomorrow. So I will uh, let you know how that goes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all soon.